Hi and welcome, thank you for joining. Having over five years experience at a Fortune 500 company has taught me that integration between Access and Excel is very important and how you view your data is very important. So what I'm going to go over in this lesson is actually something that I use every single day at work. And the first part of this lesson is going to be exporting an Access table into an Excel worksheet. The next part will be using that worksheet to apply conditional formatting, sorting, and filtering. The third part is basically learning how to view that data to make better business decisions. So let's get started. Right here we have our Microsoft Access table. I'm going to double click it to open it up and then go to the External Data tab. To perform the export, you go to the Export group and click Excel. When you click Excel, you'll see the destination path is right here. I click Browse and I'll click Desktop. I'm going to save mine on the desktop and you can choose if you want to export the data with formatting and layout. Since I'm going to ex uh, change the formatting in Excel, I'm going to leave that unchecked and click OK. And then I will click Close. So the export is as simple as that. What I want to do now is minimize my window and open up the Excel spreadsheet. By having this Excel spreadsheet open, the first thing I want to do is check to make sure that all of the data transferred correctly. So I'll go back into Access, I'll check my record count, which is 41, and then go back to Excel and see how many rows I have, 42. Don't worry, remember the first row was just your headers. So yes, all of the data transferred correctly. Next thing I want to do is best fit this data. So I'm going to highlight columns A through H and double click on them to best fit it. And then I'll click inside the data and, ins and go to the insert tab to create a table. Now remember your table does have headers, so click OK. And you'll see now that data is appearing into or as a table in Excel. Now I'm going to create a scenario for you. Say you have a truckload of freight that just got dropped off at the port of Long Beach. Okay, so that's in California. And then you have your destination over here. And let's say that this freight needs to go to Texas. Well, first thing I need to do is filter out everything that is not Texas. So I'm going to click on this filter icon right here on destination. And then I'll go down here and uh, uncheck everything by clicking on the select all checkbox and scroll down to Texas. Once I click Texas, I'll click OK. And we see now that filter has been applied and we only see Texas carriers. All right. So part of this job that I had was to call up trucking companies and try to basically get them to move the freight from point A to point B successfully with high quality service for as little much or as little money as possible. So basically in our scenario here we have California to Texas and so we see right here is the average cost column. Now to the point in the lesson where I'm going to apply that conditional formatting to give me the visual representation of what I was looking for. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to highlight all of the data associated with average cost. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab and in the Styles group you'll find this button for conditional formatting. Now let's say our customer is paying us $2,700 and we want to pay $2,300 or less. So what I'm going to do is I could actually make this appear visually by clicking on conditional formatting and under the highlight cells rules option I can choose less than. So if I pay less than $2,300 I want that to be positive. Green means go. Those are going to be the people that I call first. So if uh, the cells are less than $2,300 they should appear in green. I click OK and there we go. They are appearing in green now. Now what I want to do is go back into conditional formatting and we were getting paid $2,700, right? So let's say if uh, we paid between $2,301 and that $2,700, at the very least we're breaking even, but we're not meeting our goal of paying less than $2,300. So we'll just put those in at yellow. Okay, so we're still making a profit, just not as much of a profit. And lastly, in some scenarios, you have to get that customer's freight picked up. so sometimes you take a loss on it, meaning you're going to pay more to get that freight moved than your customer actually paid you. We want to avoid that at all scenario or at all costs, but uh, sometimes it does happen. So if we, play, if we pay the trucking company greater than 2701, 
we'll say that should appear in red. So we're trying to avoid that. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click away from this so that you can see it. And we see we now have that visual representation of our data. Now, as I mentioned before, cost isn't everything if the service is bad, right? We have to have a good cost at a good service level. And so that comes to our loads here. So how much have we actually done with this particular carrier? So we see that with night train transport, for instance, we've already moved 59 loads. That's great. So let's say, uh, let's say I want to visualize that. And so I'm going to highlight all of that data and go again to conditional formatting. Now what I'm going to look at this time is a color scale. Okay, so color scale is a visual representation from green to uh, red, green being good, red being bad is with this option. So if I click on this, that's great. Now I can see that representation. But let's say at JB Hunt that with 20 loads or more, that should be a trusted carrier, meaning that with uh, 20 loads or more, they should be able to basically um, be in all green. Okay, so 20 loads or more means I've developed a good relationship with this carrier. And we see here, this person has 20, but it's showing up in orange, which is kind of negative. And we see that that's the reason for that is it's being set off by this 100. That would be the greenest. And everything that's less than that is a shade of uh, light green all the way through yellow, orange, and all the way eventually to red. So I don't want this 100 to offset my 20 up here because again, 20 is enough. It should be good. So what I want to do now is set specific rules. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first clear the rules from the selected cells. Okay, that way no conditional formatting is applied on those cells any longer. And then I'm going to go back to color scales and I'm going to set specific rules. And so I'm going to click on this option for more rules. So you could actually uh, customize your rules quite a bit as far as your conditional formatting goes. And I'm going to create a three color scale. Again, from green being positive to red being negative. So if I've only worked with this carrier one time, I want to select the type number and I want to change that to a 1. The midpoint should be 10 in this scenario and remember 20 is a trusted carrier. I've worked with them a lot and so I'll choose 20. And so now we see if I click that now we see this one over here which used to be orange is now green because it fits that qualification of 20 or more. So no longer does that 100 offset the rest of our color uh, scale here. And so that's very, very good. So now we're seeing if we can link up two greens, then those are going to be the people that we're going to want to call first, right? So what I'm going to do now is basically use a sort to show this data even more visually appealing. So I'm going to go to average cost right here, and I'm going to sort smallest to largest, okay? And I do that. And now we see we have a great visual representation of the data that we're looking at. So in this particular case, I'm going to call Stephanie because I not only get a great co uh, cost with her, but I also get a great relationship, right? I've done 73 moves with her. She does great work. I'm calling her first. Now, in this industry, oftentimes you don't have, uh, you know, trucks that are unlimited, right? So I might call Stephanie and she says, oh, well, I don't really have any more trucks for you, so sorry, but I, I can't help you out. So then, do I call up Marco or Jesse, who have done one or three loads with me? Well, it really just uh, comes down to personal preference, right? Because for $18 more, I could call Dave, who I've done 38 loads with and have a better re uh, relationship with. So it's really going to come down to uh, cost benefit, right? If this is a, a customer that I really need to make sure that their freight gets taken care of, maybe I call Dave before Marco. So that's a way that we can use conditional formatting to actually um, dis make business decisions and improve efficiency. So it's very important to um, always look at what ways you can use data in general in Excel and Access and deciding should I export the data to Excel or should I leave it in Access? And so hopefully this uh, tutorial will help you 
make those decisions. If you have any questions about any of that, please let me know. Um, I would definitely uh, do another video on something else that you might have a question of in Access or Excel. Just throw it in the comments section below. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Thank you for watching.